Real quick test. Testing, testing. How do you sound? I think I sound pretty good. Good in your headphones? Yeah, definitely not louder. Not louder. Yeah. Oh, what I was saying is it was weird because I didn't used to have a lisp. You have a lisp? Um, yeah, do you hear it? 55, 66. Church? Church. Very slight. Very s- slight. Slight. I just extend Slit my the S's. Slit the sheets. <laughs> the sheets. The sheets. That was so funny. I was like, they're going to like this one. I liked it. Is it fun? And then after, <coughs> I think it was Hawk was like, I didn't slit the sheets. I slit <laughs> my pants. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ready? Yeah. All right. <gasps> we need to start with this because I am parched. So welcome back to Miss and the Homies. This is the show where I hang out and bullshit with my homies. Woo. Finally, Rebecca's solo app. And she's going to try Liquid Death. My first ever Liquid Death. Wait. We're going to sit here through it. <laughs> oh. That was... Oh. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, God. I get it now. It's just like... It's, it's just, just so good. It's just sparkling water, but... No, but it's like not... Mm. I actually haven't had the lime in a bit. And it tastes like Skittles. It tastes like a watered down Seven Up, which is great for me because I don't like sugary drinks, and I find Seven Up is sometimes too sweet. See, like that Canada Dry drink. <laughs> I like to two sips up. Two I brought si- it again. Oh my god! Get rid of it. <laughs> Just no, drink I'm gonna it. put it in the fridge. I'm gonna drink it during the show. You're gonna split it with water. You're gonna cut it with water. Honestly, cut it with liquid death. <laughs> That's the reason I got into like liquid death. One, I mean, I I love the whole. Mm. vibe of it but i like was drinking way too much pop like last night what i I had like three bevs and they were all like (laughs) so sugary i had to stop myself from getting the blue lemonade which i had for breakfast (laughs) (laughs) it was like the blue lemonade the canada dry you had something before we left too like on i had a liquid death yesterday yep and the iced teas you had the raspberry iced tea yeah, see, like, boom, 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 boom. If boom. I if I let myself, I'll just drink pop and iced tea You're and a beverage girly. I love it. Oh, I need a bev. <laughs> drink of the episode. So, Becca, how are you feeling? Today's well, the day. It's opening night. So the real question is, how are you feeling? You know, <laughs> the older I get, the less I feel like pressure affects me. Cause mm-hmm. like right now. I'm calm. I'm so good. You you just saw I was on uh, the call for the condo. So smooth. Yeah. Like, no you were stress. even like moving your bag. You were yeah. Like, yeah. Like, I'm setting up while I'm doing it. And I like, so I'm not nervous, but I'm so excited, especially after yesterday's run through. Yeah. Our Italian run was so good. It, kinda, it was not it even ca- an Italian It kind of dipped <laughs> like maybe five <laughs> scenes in. And then they're just like, my my family recipe like louder. Come on. I like you. <laughs> I the really key. do Not want the key. I really do want a bump for a butt cake. <laughs> Sir? I think we should do it today uh, today with Grant. <laughs> does everybody <laughs> special does, guest just all the thirty middle schoolers and Grant sitting in the back <laughs> is just like <laughs> What? <laughs> well we sold out. Oh, Today's it's sold show, out? it's sold out. Hell yeah. Packed. Packed. Hell yeah. We have one show with zero tickets <laughs> sold. And but you know, you know what? What are you going to do? It balances out. And then there's going to be, be people zero. There's gonna be people who come, who are going to try to come in tonight, who didn't buy tickets. Yeah. And they're not going to know what to do. They're going to be like, come next week. Yeah. Oh, so all this weekend is, so what? We have- Friday, which is tonight. Friday, we have two Saturday, on Saturday. Saturday, Sunday. Sunday. Then next week- It's just Friday, Friday Saturday, Saturday. Saturday. Oh, Done. just one on Saturday. Two Saturdays, yeah. Friday, Saturday, Saturday. Gotcha. Done. Strike Sunday. Okay, so how are you feeling? I'm because feeling really good. I like also, I woke up this morning and I was like, oh, it's an opening night. It doesn't feel like it. Is it too far away? <laughs> it doesn't feel, nah, I don't really feel like it. It doesn't really <laughs> feel like it. It doesn't really feel like opening night. I feel like 
<laughs> really, yeah. like, it doesn't feel like opening night. No. Um, I think a part of that is I feel like this is the first. I feel like this is the first show I've ever directed where I feel like my only job was director. Really? Yeah. Like I feel like a lot of. I feel like a lot of other shows that I've worked on because they've been either so low budget or it's high budget. So I have a very specific role and it's not a directing role because it's too high. Right. Um, I feel like this was the first show that had a budget, had a team, and all I have to do is direct the thing. How does that feel? Like, how do you, how do you, because I, similar to that, like I'm used Mm -hmm. to playing, even for this, like so many different roles. Like you asking if you could help set up. Like I'm used to doing all the different roles. So when I just step back and do one, it feels weird. It feels really weird, especially because I started out as a stage manager, Mm -hmm. the role Um. that I like have you in. And I did that for four years. I literally went to college and have a degree in stage management. Wow. Like that was my like concentration. Um, You couldn't like technically declare a major in it, but it was like your theater major and then you had a concentration within it. And mm-hmm. then each concentration had a path you had to follow. So what was your concentration? So mine was stage management. Oh, so okay. I took all the design classes, all the tech classes. So I basically had a huge knowledge and understanding of each department. Mm-hmm. And then had the opportunity to like understand how to operate those departments. And yeah. Them. But a stage manager is different than a production manager, which is my job in this at this theater. Yeah. Because a stage manager is in charge of the actors in the space. The stage manager. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They run the whole stage and the actors. So even on actors' equity, they are on the actors' equity for the union. Whereas the production manager would be on the productions. Yeah, they're on IATSE. So that's... They're what? IATSE. That's the acronym. Um, But a production manager runs I've never heard anyone say the acronym out loud. IATSE? Yeah. Interesting. Sorry. Anyways. I'm like trying to figure out what it would be without... I don't. I would just say the letters. I mean, I'm not saying you're wrong. I just said. Yeah, but what are the letters? Like I've never said it without the letters, or I've never said it not IATSE. Is it I A T I O S E? That's what I. I anyways. Uh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> not important. It's not important. But anyway, in this theater, I am the production manager, so it's kind of the same hat as the director for this specific process. Mm -hmm. But in this part of the process, I just feel like the director and it's pretty cool. It's like relaxing. Yeah, like, so, I don't know, I was telling Grant this the other day that like, I felt like I wasn't, I not fully here, but like, because I was just helping, because the three of us, I felt like the three of us worked so well together that it felt like it was just, and not even the three of us, the four of us, like with Kayla too, just the our four dynamics. I felt like I, like it was so easy. It, yeah, it's weird because it's never gonna be that easy again. I know. Ever. And I was like, it <laughs> didn't. That's why. I don't know. I think I feel like in part that's why I'm not like stressed because I'm like, you know, I don't feel like I was stressing to get to this point. Not that we weren't, mm. but like this tech week was. I mean, we. We're here so much. We were we did so much, but like I don't know. It was fun. It was it was cool. Yeah. Like it was really fun. I also think that it really um I think like I don't know. I think last night you like were watching the scene and you had your script and you had the key lab open and you were watching and you like called two cues in a row. <laughs> like just off of them. I like felt like the proudest. I was like <laughs> <laughs> I think I literally stopped you too and I was like, you just called this. Like then that- I missed the next one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Grant's like, all right, you guys are too loud up there. Uh, how would I like little. <laughs> with my lighter app. I, lighter you know, app. it was the sh- the worst <laughs> lighter app. I was trying to show Grant earlier. Does it like flip open and close like I lighter? was trying to show Grant when we went and got pop bellies and like it was the first lighter app. So it was like one of those shitty ones where like five ads popped up. You can't click. <laughs> So it was so bad. <laughs> the lighter just like closes on you and you can't figure out how to open well, it. That's back what he up. Said. He's like, Can you flick it open? I'm like, No, no. you just have to, like, <laughs> you're just touching the screen. So stupid. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's, I think I was just like so proud of it. I was like, That's so, it's a really hard skill 
to call a show. Calling a show is like one of the hardest things to do, Mm -hmm. especially because in a professional show, as a stage manager, you're not actually calling you're not pressing anything. Mm-hmm. You're just calling Call. when things happen. That's what Grant was telling me. Mm-hmm. So you would just be in the booth and you'd be like, stand by lights and sound. Lights and sound. Say, lights, sound. And you go, lights, go. Sound, go. So mm. you have a bunch of different departments underneath you. Usually you'd have lights, sound, projections, ASMs. So they'd be stage left and stage What's right. What's ASM? Assistant stage manager. Okay. So they usually sit in the back of the wings and they're the ones that operate. They're queuing people. Yeah, they're queuing people. Gotcha. So you operate people. You can operate ropes and poles of things and sets flying in. Mm-hmm. So our fl- fly one, fly two, um, presets. So there's all a bunch of like code that mm. you use over headset. Ayatsi. It is. <laughs> Yatsi. <laughs> Yatsi. Uh, <laughs> it is so cool. There's a show called. 10 out of 12 by Ann Washburn. And it's a play where everyone in the audience gets a headset. And oh. then half of the actors in the show are tech people. Like it's them doing a tech day. Gotcha. So you have the actors on the so stage. Meta. And that then all so the audience members have headsets. And then you hear the stage managers and the lighting, like every design team over headset oh, while watching the show. That's really cool. But it's all scripted. So the stage manager is an actor. Yeah. So there's a real stage manager calling the cues for the stage, for the stage manager character. That's so complicated. It is but so that sounds fun. awesome. It is literally the coolest see, show. Where do you even see that? I read it, but I've like seen like different like um interpretations of it in the past. That sounds like that have, like, sounds my, that sounds like my kind of Overly complicated. It's so cool. Meta shit. I love it. Meta shit. Twins. In the metaverse. <laughs> In the metaverse. <laughs> how do you, so how do you feel with the kids? Like, how did you feel with the show and the kids after the run yesterday? Because, like, when you pitched this yeah. show to me, I was so immediately in because it, uh, just like the idea of show being like a cultural identity and like a unifier was like, it's so interesting because it's like, yeah, like it's so, it makes so much sense, but like something you, that I like take for granted, I don't think about it like that. But then throughout the show, like I was thinking about like, you know, my porky cakes or like how much uh, I enjoy making pizza for people and stuff like that. And I was like, this show has made me look at food differently. So how does it feel to like see that, see the kids do it? And like, I don't know. I mean, I, in my head, your whole goal with the show was to do that. And you did it with me. So (laughs) you got one. Yay. (laughs) I think it's really fascinating. I, um, I definitely, the one thing I think is very different from my initial version of the show or what I thought about in my head was the amount of heart that was in it. Yeah. And it comes from that age group, but I think it also comes from, it's something to lean into of the way of that they connect with food is very different from the way that I connected with food. Yeah. Um, And there's still similarities, but some of the ways that they connect through food is just through media. Yeah. Like, I'd wake up in the morning and, like, I'd watch the Food Network Food Network with my dad or, like, Ace of Cakes. And, like, those... Oh, my God. Good. Cake Boss? Yes. Cake Boss. Cake like, boss. those are the shows I'd watch, but they weren't teaching me how to cook. Mm-hmm. And these, They were just about food. They were just about food. It was like the unwrapped. drama. I loved Unwrapped. Unwrapped. Is sick. <laughs> oh, no. That's Good Eats. Oh, my God. Anyway, I don't know. Anyway, it was so I good. Don't know. Um, but I didn't grow up with, um, like, I didn't really watch many cooking shows. They were more competition based. Yeah. And I feel like chopped. this, yeah. And I feel like it was it was chopped. It was um, Iron Chef. Bobby Flay. Bobby Flay. Guy Fieri. Guy Fieri. Oh my God. Yeah, it was a lot. Even Guy Fieri, it's like about him touring around and yeah. eating other food. So I don't think I really got a lot of, like, teaching how to cook. And I feel like they get a lot of, like, cooking videos on TikTok 
Instagram, post, making their own smoothies. Post pandemic. Post pandemic. Like they get a lot of how they can make their own food. And so because of that, a lot of the media that they're consuming is like other chefs or also like silly YouTube channels. Um, and so all their connections to food in this show are, are very memes. like that. They're all memes. <laughs> it's like Gordon, Gordon Ramsay and even Paul Hollywood. That's Paul a competition Hall. show. Yeah. Um, but they also like teach you like they have like cookbooks about Great British Bake Off. You can, like, make mm. I don't know. Bob's Burgers. Bob's Burgers. I have the Bob's Burgers cookbook. It's so good. Oh, the show is so good. I love Bob's Burgers. Me too. Anyway, I think the heart in the show is definitely the thing that I was not um, as... I was surprised by the way that the... I was surprised by the way that they showed heart in the show, <coughs> which was through um, making... Talking about moments of their life. And like moments where food is active, not necessarily making anything. Not like, so much about the actual food, but, but like where it is, where the food is, mm -hmm. the butt cakes, the quiche, yep. the right, butt, butt, <laughs> the butt not cakes. the butt cakes and quiche. <laughs> <laughs> Things like lemonade stand, or I, 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 um, it's like all the different places where the food are there. So lemonade stand, grocery store, um. I'm trying to think of like others that do it well. Back in my day, back in the kitchen, mm -hmm. um, we is did a lot cake? of those. Is it cake? Is it cake? Is so funny. That one's so good. I think it's just very fast. They are so willing to be honest about their own stories, but the way that they present them is very different than what I expected. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm really happy that they are happy with the content um, because my goal was to have it really initially come all through them yeah and i think it really did i think it really came through them i think it 100 percent came from them whereas we sort of tightened it up gave it to them and they even expanded on it further yeah like, like I can't I always think about um I don't even remember which actor this was but they were like yeah this year I didn't want a birthday cake made by my mom like my mom asked me what birthday cake I wanted this year and I didn't want her cake like I wanted to do something different um and that made me sad mm -hmm. and it reminded me of uh, there was a story on the moth um which is a storytelling podcasting group um and there was a story about when someone realized that they grew up and they were like, they, I grew up when I was planning my birthday cake. Mm. And like I, that was the switch for me was birthday cake. So it's little things like, like that. Like for you personally? Well, for myself, well, I guess it's also very awkward because I'm born on Christmas. So yeah. we always have to get my birthday cake like a little too early because everything is like. That's <laughs> insane. Yeah, like the tw 20th, 22nd. Yeah, wait, this year for Christmas, I asked Nick's family. You asked with them. Santa for. <laughs> Santa. Santa, can I get a birthday cake, please? Birthday cake? <laughs> um, I asked Nick's family, I'm like, oh, what can we bring for Christmas this year? And they were like, oh, you can bring dessert. And I was like, okay, cool. And then I called my mom later. I was like, yeah, we're going to bring dessert. She was like, so you're going to bring your own birthday cake? <laughs> and Nick was so kind because I don't really like cake. Yeah, I'm not a big cake you're person. You're more of a pie person. I'm more pie, and I also like salty. So Nick was like, what do you want for your birthday? And I was like... I'd really love if I could have brownies with potato chips Ooh. in them or on top. Ooh. I was thinking like sprinkled on top. Yeah. Kind of like a salty pretzel vibe, or like a chocolate that chip sounds interesting. vibe. I was like, that would be fun. Yeah. Uh, but he baked the potato chips into the brownies uh, and they literally were bricks. Oh, no. It was the, like one of the worst things. We were all trying to eat it. We were like, mm, <laughs> these are, these are, this is delicious. These are so good. It was horrid. Just like. Scooping it it behind was it. so bad. Um, nom, nom, nom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I felt so bad. Um, yeah. <laughs> but so. <laughs> anyway, back to the kids. Yeah. Oh, should I read you my director's note? I was going to ask if you wanted to. So I'm going to read you my director's note. So this is usually in the show. Or usually this goes in the program. And this is like why this show. Why the show now. Yeah. What does it mean to you? Why the show? Why? Yeah. Why the this show? This is the show's why. This is the why. Which I 
fucking love. Me too. I'm a big why person. I hope this answers the why. Um, well, I don't know. We'll de- we'll we'll decide right now. <laughs> um. Okay. Growing up in a Puerto Rico. Wait, wait, wait. Whoa. Hold, hold for plane. Hold for plane. So sorry. I never grew up. <laughs> Growing up in. Just just soak in those summer sounds for a minute. Okay, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> You're good. Okay. Let's hear it. Let's see how this sounds. <laughs> <coughs> Growing up in a Puerto Rican, Italian, and Jewish household, food was never just sustenance. Each meal contained a story, a memory of a loved one, a recipe as old as time, or an inside joke. Certain dishes would make us chuckle, and some even came with songs. But then there were the dishes that were bittersweet. Drinking root beer floats while sitting shiva for my nana, making grilled cheese with my dad after late night rehearsals, or eating farina with my grandmother when I was sick. I cannot eat any of these without thinking of them. In Love, Loss, and What I Ate, we seek to present both the bitter and the sweet of our own food stories on stage. As a devised production, each actor brought their own stories, connections, and recipes to the rehearsals, where we then came together to make new ones. With each of us having our own unique backgrounds, we had so much to bring to the table, playing with Mudlark's season theme of individuality and welcomeness through generational storytelling. In this show, the kitchen became the place to be yourself. It is my hope that this show will inspire you to bring more joy into your own kitchen, a place where we can let our creativity run wild in uncharted ways. And of course, I also leave with you a Shulsky family recipe for you to enjoy. And then I left my Nana's Mandelbury recipe. What's Mandelbury? It is Jewish biscotti. Oh. It's those little cookies that I made. Yeah, you brought them into the potluck, right? Yeah. So what, I left the recipe. So what's a, what's one of your uh what's one of your dishes that comes with a song? Oh my god. Um So sorry, that was beautiful. No. That did was, you like it? I did. That Yay. was like so sweet. I'm like <laughs> I I don't know. Thank you for having me on this. No, like I'm so this happy. is this has been awesome. This is so sweet. Um okay. Um the things that came with songs. Um Let me pull up the playlist real quick. <laughs> <I> just <laughs> skirt. Um no, my family and I used to go to this place called Woodlock. Um which is a Oh my god. It was like a MetLife. It was like a it was like a uh family resort in the Poconos. So you'd like go for a week. Where's the Poconos? Pennsylvania. It's like in the mountains of Pennsylvania. Interesting. I didn't. It was like a whole place. I've heard of the Poconos. It was like know. a resort where gotcha. there were like wood cabins and Sick. you'd like stay Cl- with your family. Cl- <laughs> Cl- <laughs> <laughs> Cl- <laughs> um, but then they'd have dinners and everyone, it was on like a lake. So, so they had like swimming wood and life. activities. Wood yeah. It was Woodlock. 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 Fl- Flintlock Wood. It was so fun. We went every 4th of July. And when they would do, they had one night. On Friday nights, they would do fried shrimp nights. Oh, it was hell yeah. so good. They'd like come around with huge. Tell me a shrimp fried this room. <laughs> <laughs> but they would give you these forks that were really small to go and like eat the shrimp. I don't know why you don't really eat shrimp with a fork. But no, but I get it. Like those little small ones. Yeah. Like, like a like a tasting spoon yes. at an ice cream place. Yes. But a fork. Yes. Gotcha. Exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they um, so they had these little mini forks, um, and then my family, <laughs> we would sing, um, Edelweiss from The Sound of Music. It's like Edelweiss, Edelweiss. It's like a very pretty lullaby. Well. While conducting with the fork? Well, yeah, and then we sing it, mini fork, <laughs> mini fork, <laughs> how I long to eat you. Uh, so Ye- every time we had fried shrimp, or shrimp, really, Just in we'd gen- be like, get the mini forks. We'd be like, mini forks. Oh, you guys had your own mini forks? Yeah, we like got mini forks for my kitchen. That's so... so- we had tiny mini forks. Because <laughs> it was just such a fun thing that we did. So mm. it was like that came with songs every time there was shrimp. Mini fork. That's so funny. Every time we see a tiny fork, mini <laughs> fork. <laughs> sure. I went to Alinea. I'm not even kidding you. I <gasps> sang it in Alinea. Alinea. Oh I yeah, did. you were telling me about like, mini fork. <laughs> Nick was like, stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> was like, we are at a Michelin <laughs> star restaurant. How many? Doesn't it have three? Yeah. Oh my god. Crazy. Yeah. Mini forks. Mini forks. 
insane. Yeah, they literally like tried to take it away from me, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> stuffed the mini fork in your pocket. Yeah, the forks over the course of the meal. I like the waiter saw that I like wanted my fork, and he was like, "Don't worry, they just get bigger over time." I was like, You're "No, like, I wanted to stop here." <laughs> I was like, "I want this. <laughs> it's this big." Most of the time, they had a dish that didn't even come with any utensils. How did you eat it? It was a little was like bowl, <laughs> and it had a pin, and then all the food was layered up on the pin that went through the bowl. So you had to pull the pin and then shoot it. Whoa. Yeah, it was so good. Except Nick didn't know that you had to chew it, so he just downed this whole oh, thing. So and he just took a shot? He just took a shot? A potato. <gasps> I would do it. I was like, I'd, Nick. <laughs> I, would, I, would put my, I would put potatoes in my veins if I could. <laughs> potatoes. <laughs> Start cut, cut me and I bleed mashed potato. <laughs> Tomato. <laughs> Polynesian. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, that's so funny. My <sighs> sister. Ha- my sister had a mini spoon. Like w- at my parents' house, <laughs> we had like, we had a regular. We had regular silverware, and then there was mm-hmm. one like row that was just miscellaneous. Yeah, like, we have that spoons. too. Yep. Oh, yes. And my sister had. The small, like, literally, it was like this For big. ice cream? She would eat yogurt with it. Oh, I don't like that. And then my brothers, yeah, my youngest brother was super into yogurt. So, that's such a weird thing to say. But <laughs> into it was, yogurt? It was like, y- like just making like, yogurt or eating yogurt? No, just like eating yogurt. Plain yogurt? No, like, you know, like. Like the yo play? No, like, like, co- f- like fun yogurts? yogurt. Like the ones that have like the glass jar the oreo no not the like the oreo oh. like not real yogurt like, oh like the like, like vanilla pudding yogurt <laughs> yeah and they would eat it with the little spoon those things were so good but then you ran out of the oreos and i didn't want it anymore i you know i never liked any of those i didn't like the m&m one because the colors would bleed oh yeah and then i was looking at this and it like looked like orange mush because they always had so many orange and brown m&ms yeah like i don't know why Ew. but it was only like orange and brown like maybe a couple of red and, then, and blue then and then it was yogurt like, looks like <laughs> <laughs> it just looked like shit <laughs> i was like i don't want this anymore <laughs> this is of horrible. In it. oh my god i didn't like many of those snacky things but i think it's because i was a chunky kid so i, I didn't snacks. get many of those chunky <laughs> i didn't get many of them love snacks my favorite were the uh were those oreo dippers that had like the the Oreo cream and then the like Oreo stick. Almost like a Dunkaroo yeah. version. I would just Dunkaroos. eat that Oreo cream. And then <laughs> like Are you a cream first or a cookie first? <laughs> Pause. <laughs> uh no, I can only eat Oreos with milk. Like uh, every now If I like gave you an Oreo right now, you'd be like, Where's my milk? <laughs> I would be like, My drink. <laughs> My, my diet, Dr. Kelp. My carbonated milk. <laughs> Ew. I'm so happy that character's not in the show. I I really, I wish he would have made it. But he would have been too much of a, tri- a trouble milker. <laughs> a treble milker. The acapella <laughs> version. The acapellas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I must warn you. Um... I'm trying to think if there was anything else because I mean we we have a we have kind of a busy day we can't uh, can't be camp out forever but this has just been so just like thank you for coming on this journey oh my god thank you for um, thank you for converting me to, to I know theater. it's so fun I think it's just so I don't know especially when this is so this is like my favorite style of theater is having high level of knowledge and execution high level of knowledge but the objective is not for execute like high execution yeah just a good end product yeah like the, the objective of the show is that we write a bunch of amazing stuff and the actors have fun yeah like the objective is to have fun yeah it's not selling tickets it's not. I mean, of course, that's all like a part of it, but yeah. like, but that's not our the, the job. End, the end goal is for fun. Is for fun. Yeah, and F that makes fun. it. Yeah, it makes it so good. Use for uranium. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, sorry. <laughs> and it's for, for no survivors. survivors. <laughs> 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 um, I. Yeah. I really love uh, this kind of just 
creating. Like, even this, like, this is the best it could be with, like, not low budget, like, not not the show. Like, this show, I don't know. I don't know. I am very, I'm, I loved doing this because it felt like we got, we had the budget to kind of play with however, and we, like, the day we thrifted, killed it oh we killed we it got, we spent like three hours in that goodwill and we got we smashed such good stuff with even like barely barely touching the like scraping the t- i don't even know what i'm trying to say hold <laughs> hold for plane hold for plane plane thank you plane <laughs> i just like I, yeah making art with um like you just said like yes we had a budget but that's the thing is like we f- you find something that's so good and the moment you find something that's just like amazing or you make something that's amazing yeah. your expectation is not that high you there's not a bar you have to hit when you're making art that's like the objective is fun yeah like i just made a cookie out of a cardboard box but then i took a little bit of modeling clay and put it on an apple and it looks way too good yeah. for what it's supposed to be and it like it's so much more fun because i hit a different mark when it wasn't expected to. And I think, like... And it was just for fun. I mean, this... Doing this show really reminded me of my time in college. Yeah. And it was really, like, you know, we had the tools. Mm-hmm. We had the space. We had a budget. And it was the four of us. And we kind of got to do whatever we want. And... Was this for the radio show? Oh what no! I'm talking for? about I'm talking about this. Oh, for the for oh, the you're video club, this. for yeah. the video club. But for the video club, like we had a space, we had the equipment, we had people, and we could do whatever we want. And just getting to make the show that we did is so like it looked so. The lights looked amazing. They look so good. Just shout out to Grant for doing an imma- like immaculate oh. job. Grant, Grant will talk. Grant, Grant will talk. Grant, Grant, knows. Will, Grant will talk his shit when he, he knows. when we uh, when we when yeah, we talk. Yeah, and that's kind of the thing, right? It's like it's it's Grant did it because he loves to do it. Be- and how many times did he stop and say, "This is so good. I lo- like. I'm having so much fun. This is so good. I love to do this." And like, and like, if he couldn't put up a light in a corner because it was like we didn't have the budget or whatever, it's fine. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Because. But the but the workarounds that he made with the limited resources like that's my favorite shit yeah. is to like have have the resources but not like we didn't have all as we didn't have all the lights that we needed but with what we did have we it looks so good and I, i'm just like it's I'm, so great it's gonna look so good it's it's crazy to me to think about that like this type of theater I think I enjoy so much. The parents are going to have a blast. Even, like, if you're not a parent and you're just, like, seeing the show. Like, it's just so That's what I was fun. thinking. I'm, like, I... Obviously, we're biased because we've spent three months with these kids. But, like, yesterday, seriously, seriously, like, after after writing it and rehearsing it and hearing it and seeing it for three months, like, I didn't think it was going to be funny. But the first run-through was fucking hilarious they like were, the farmer's market fucking nails so like lactose to love all previously of, on lactose all to of love it, all of it is so good and i'm just like i don't know i i will i feel so we're not even there but i feel pre-accomplished <laughs> <laughs> like i'm like very nervous i think the thing i'm nervous or not nervous about that's not what my brain was at oh this was it my brain was thinking i should tell them today that like you might get laughter Slow it down. Wait for the laughter. Mm-hmm. I think they'll get laughs. They're hundred percent gonna get laughs. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Because it's like, yeah, we sit and we hear the we've heard the we've heard the line soy prize so many She's times. She's gotta hit soy prize though. She's just, soy prize. Soy prize. <laughs> I'm like, come on, Sadie. Be soy prizing. <laughs> oh, um, uh, what I was thinking about before was. How crazy it is to use a budget that you have and make theater that I enjoy more. Like, I enjoy a show like this. If I, like, had never seen it and, like, someone was, like, come see the show, 
and I sat down and I saw it, I would enjoy a show like this more than I would enjoy Moulin Rouge on Broadway. And Moulin Rouge, their budget was disgusting. It was disgusting. Crazy. They had... Talk Tigers. about one light. <laughs> the Fireworks. The <laughs> Moulin Rouge musical had... They wanted a pop-out light. So they were using a rover, and they needed, like, a big shadow of yeah. these people. It took, like, five seconds. It was, like, shadow and down. And the rover was taking too long. So it was, like, shadow and down. Mm-hmm. Even just that amount made it look a little unpolished. Weird. Yeah. So the director was, like, we need a light that's going to do exactly exactly what we need. And the director is super famous. I'm forgetting his like name <laughs> off the top of my head. Wow. As you do. Super famous. He also did uh, Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson. Um, super famous. Which is a rock musical about Andrew Jackson. It's very good. It's not a rap And he did um, about and Beetlejuice. <laughs> not about Hamilton. <laughs> Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson. Anyway, they needed a pop light. They installed a light into the floor of the Nederlander Theater that literally just... The floor pops up, up. and it's a huge light, and then it goes back down. $30,000. Holy fucking. $30,000 for this one light. One light. (laughs) Jeez. $30,000 to get the mechanism to fly it out in time because they decided they needed this three days before we opened. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's. So it was, it's either, like, there's, like, the trifecta, right? It's either, like, you do something really well, really slow for cheap. Yes. Or you do something half assed, um, really half assed, fast, that's cheap. Or you do something really good, really slow, cheap, really good, <laughs> really fast, super expensive. It's got to be two of the three. Yeah. Yes. I like <laughs> kept doing this movement. I was like, this is not helping. It's, but it's like. I was lost as soon as you said the second thing. I was it like, has mm. to be like. I know what you're saying. Something though. like that. It was because they had no time. They had to have it super fast and needed to be really, really good, which meant that it was going to be really, really expensive. Yes. Whereas we got to work on this for three months, tighten it up, and it wasn't super expensive. No. We have less of a budget than the other two shows in the season and i think we killed it i think we killed it i think it. we killed it what's next for you neo what's your next artistic endeavor <sighs> i don't know i gotta figure that out because i don't know where my other show's at right now that's a whole thing um but i don't know this is forever like at this point this is gonna be something that i do until it gets boring and i stop but like right now (laughs) just hanging out with my friends cracking a a drink and hanging with the homies like doing stuff like this is your theme song rolling with the homies no rolling with the homies (laughs) oh no there is a theme song I'll what send it. it. Oh yeah, you still haven't seen the first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I gotta send you the link. What you is know, the my 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 next creative project is to tighten this up. <laughs> this is four sque- three squeaky wheels. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's one of the wheels is just me. Yeah. <laughs> squeak, squeak, squeak. <laughs> just me squeaking along. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'll say it here so you know we're not done. <gasps> this is not the last one. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Um, that makes me happy. So we have, uh, I think, two more. Yes. Two more. This makes me so happy. This has been so fun. This is, uh, like, for me, this is even just, like, a chronicle of this show. And at the end, I like, I mean, I've shot a bunch of stuff. So, like, I was going to put together, like, a, a, <gasps> a vlog. A little vlog? Yeah. I'm going to so, cry. So that's probably my next, I mean, video that I'm working on. But Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, with that being said, well, with that being said, well, well, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, with that being said, uh, we gotta get to recording or not recording. Gotta get to the show. All right. Peace. We'll be back. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Becca will return in in, in Avengers: Infinity War. <laughs> in, in Avengers: Yahoo! Endgame. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> 
All right, we're done. <laughs>